so first of all, Billy, thanks for doing this. Of course, really appreciate it. Um, how did you get involved with Green Juju and why? I mean, I'm sure when you became available for hire, there were probably dozens of people that own pet product companies that are like, here's our chance. Uh, what made would, you go here? <laughs> I would say there is some truth to that statement, but um, <laughs> I actually, so it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, necessarily that Green Juju approached me. I actually approached Green Juju. Wow. Um, because I had been, <clears throat> not only I've been friends with Kelly and Mary and the owner for uh, many, probably like 10 years-ish. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but um, when Kelly so, sort of, if you know me well, I go on side stories all the time, so I'm sorry for to those who don't like long uh, things, but so a lot of people don't know this, but what happened was when Kelly was actually developing her product and put it into stores originally in the first place, she um, took it to a local retailer in Seattle and said, gave it to the, the store and said, just try this product, don't sell it, it's just a prototype. And then she left the store and, let, and where do you put it? In the freezer, um, because it needs, to main, it needs to be frozen. And um, lo and behold, about an hour later, I walked into that store and they accidentally sold it to me. So I was actually the first Green Juju customer of all time, uh, back in 2014, I think. And so it was kind of fortuitous, um, you know, that now here I am the vice president of the company. And so I had known, you know, worked in the industry alongside Kelly for a long time. And I knew the things that she was doing in terms of, you know, some of the, all the products that were developed before I was here and the quality and the sourcing and this amazing mission to reach as many pet parents as possible, especially on the freeze dried side. And because there are just a lot of pet parents who are not, you know, comfortable going into the refrigerator or freezer. Um, it's just not, uh, whether it's a budget thing or whatever it might be. So my goal ultimately, you know, all of these years is to help as many, um, sorry, I always look at the comments and then somebody says, somebody no says can see you, but no audio, but everybody else is hearing. I think if you're having problems hearing or if you're not hearing us, let yeah. us know. So yeah, we, yeah. Okay. we got audio. Cool. Okay. So Tracy, that's on your end. <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately, um, you know, in integrity, and sourcing and you know the this this big message about getting out to as many pet parents as possible is really important to me um and i think that kelly marion was doing some amazing things before i got there so it was really just a nice combination and i said um hopefully you'll have me and she wanted to which was great and uh <laughs> then there are, i think approaching a year and a half and it's been great ever since so now interestingly i was slow to the party with Green Juju because it was sold as a frozen product in independent pet retailers. I don't shop at independent pet retailers because I have other ways that I source my food. Um, so I think the first time I actually heard about it was when I was doing an event in North Jersey that was put on by a pet store and uh, they had said that they were going to send me home with some of it out of the freezer at the end of the day. And then we forgot to get it. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so I had, I actually had not started using the products until we, until we started carrying the freeze dried products. Because again, I just, I don't go to independent pet stores very often at all, unless I'm speaking. So for the past two years, <laughs> it's been zero. Um, so the, she started with the frozen products, right? Yeah, she started with Just Greens, which Just is Greens. which is really the um, it's this guy. Yes, so she started with Just Greens, so it really is the core of our company. So this was developed for her dog Bailey um, at the time, who was going had a rare um, cancer uh, joint tumor, and so she was getting her ready for surgery. And so she went into pet stores, and she couldn't find what she was looking for in terms of supplementation that she wanted. She didn't want to do at the time a pill or a powder or something. And so she started to make this product and actually the name comes from, I believe her nieces and nephews called Juice Juju. And so I, I, as far as I know, her husband would be like, are you done with the green Juju? So we can go, you know, do something. And that's where this all came from. And this is going to be a, um, very low carbohydrate, uh, green blend. So it's 3% net carbs. Um, and it's full of things that people understand. So it's full of, yeah. So yeah, or it's all organic. So I'm not going to keep yeah. saying that 
Celery, zucchini, kale, dandelion greens, parsley, bison bone broth, coconut oil, lemon, turmeric, and ginger. So I'm gonna chime in from my nutritional TCBM standpoint on this. This stuff has great movers and shakers. We want chi tonics, we've got ginger, we've got turmeric. We want things that are going to drain phlegm and drain that, that damp heat. We've got the lemon in there. The dandelion greens, oh my gosh, talk about cleansing the liver. We've got the dandelion greens, the celery. This is, like if I was gonna design something to put in a diet, from now on, it's, you know what, just forget that, just put a spoonful of this in and it'll work fine. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you do not have to go out and source all these things because it's all there. So from a TCBM standpoint, if you have a dog with high liver enzymes, some liver cheese stagnation, Man, jump all over this stuff. This is amazing. This is gonna be draining. And um, from a cancer perspective, we want, so most cancer is a stagnation and a phlegm. And so it could be a blood deficiency as well. So this is gonna move stagnation. It's gonna help drain that phlegm. And because of the dark leafy greens, like the kale, it's also a really good blood tonic. So it's, it's kind of like, you don't have to know the exact TCBM diagnosis of that cancer. This is gonna attack all of them. Yeah, exactly. And, and it also contains uh, coconut oil. And so coconut oil is going to, you know, provide those healthy medium chain uh, fatty acids. It's going to regulate your blood sugar from rising. Um, it also has bison bone broth, which is a great novel, you know, bone broth for those dealing with allergy issues. And that was one of the, you know, we have a lot of bison products. Um, Oops. It's like, <laughs> <you're> like, <laughs> um, so we have a lot of bison products and that came from Kelly's dog, Bailey, at the time, who had a lot of sensitivities. And so that is one of our sort of core missions is to be able to um, sort of cater to those animals that, you know, are on the more sensitive, you know, I've tried everything, what can I do? Right. Um, and I think the other important thing about Just Greens, too, is everything is multifaceted. So it's not just this is a probiotic or this is this or the, you know, all of those things are going to do multiple things. So not only do you get the antioxidants, the you're talking about, but you get that wonderful diverse fiber mm -hmm. um, from many, many different plants. Um, yes. And that's kind of apparent in both of our green blends because we also have uh, Bailey's blend, which that's this one down here. is right there. So this is another green blend. And this one has, so we want to achieve sort of the same goals, but with different ingredients because you're going to, basically we're providing the whole foods for the body to break down um, because we know that the body breaks down whole food chemicals better than we would if we isolated them out and did that. So um, this one, for instance, if you want broccoli for those, you know, sulfur containing anti-cancer anti compounds instead of dandelion greens or whatever it might be. Also very low in carbohydrates. This is gonna be 3% net, net carbs um, and great to rotate between the two. Yep. Um, in fact, and we'll talk about the golden blend, but if you rotate between all three, then you will get 17 different plants into your pet's diet, which will help the microbiome, but also just help with a more diverse uh, nutrient profile. And the special thing about Bailey's Blend, my first, I would say, contribution, uh, major contribution to the company was I was um, uh, using, I've been using these products for years, but I was using this for about 10 days in my kitchen and I picked it up and I said, and I, smelled it. These products smell amazing, by the way, but I was smelling it and I was like, wow, this smells a lot like acetic acid, like any rational person would do in that scenario. <laughs> and I said, I flipped over the back and I said, oh, it has cabbage as the second ingredient, which is a great inoculator for wild ferment. And then it has um, lemon, which is an acidifier to bring the pH down. So I said, I think this is fermented. So I pulled out as normal people do my home pH testing kit and started to <laughs> I tested the pH and it was a four. And I said, oh, this is fermented. So then we started to do more experimentation. So if you leave um, this, if you have this in your fridge for eight days, it will be fermented over that time. So it, on average, it takes about eight days. So you can buy the large 30 ounce container and you can uh, feed it fresh for eight days and you, then it will be fermented and then you get a different nutrient profile. So see, I think most people, like me, I would be like, ooh, it smells off, and I would throw it away thinking it was bad, and what you're telling me is, no, it's actually just gotten better. Well, yeah, so this one will just, you know, acetic acid is like the pickle smell, uh -huh. so or like apple cider vinegar, that sort of smell. So this one smells slightly different, so it'll, it'll still smell good. 
I do want to reiterate it's just this one. So the other ones do not have the property um, for the fermentation, but it's also important. Fermentation is great. Obviously, that's where a lot of people know me, but fresh is also great. You right. know, the, the non-fermented, the that both have their qualities and you want to get both into the diet. Okay. So. so this one is cucumber, cabbage, broccoli, turkey bone broth, cilantro, chard, coconut oil, blueberries, great antioxidant, turmeric, and lemon. And shout out to um, my favorite two ingredients, which is... Um, I don't know if we can... Which is... <laughs> Let's try not to knock this everything This should be over. good. <laughs> We're going to try not to dump everything. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I'm dumping it on the food, but that's fine. That's where it needs to go. <laughs> I, I knew that actually. was not going to go well. So, <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> uh, shout out to cilantro and parsley because the reason why they're delicious is because of their antioxidant content, why they smell that way and taste that way. So those are my low-key favorite ingredients in both of those green blends. Okay, we're um, going to talk about golden blend. Yes, so we released that um, last fall. And Golden Blend is great because, think about it this way, a lot of people um, are feeding pumpkin for digestive health and antioxidant content. Um, this is a great replacer because of the fact that the squash is going to do um, really the same thing in terms of the fiber profile, but then you get all of the other great ingredients here, but you also get the bone broth to support the digestive tract, the coconut oil, um, and then you get my favorite low-key ingredient here, which is uh, golden beets, which is very mineral rich. Love, um, love those. Those are, uh, so this one is a, well, actually all these are great blood tonics, but this one is butternut squash. We all know that I love using butternut squash in my recipes. Celery, duck bone broth this time, cauliflower, golden beets, coconut oil, apple cider vinegar, ginger, and turmeric. So again, great blood tonics, great drainers. I mean, this is, this is really, so this one I'm gonna guess is gonna look orange. No, it's kind of orangey green. Yeah. So if you so that's actually something to so do we have a spoon? Mm -hmm. I'll show you what happens when you. This is actually a very good lesson for the people at home using it. So if you scoop into it at all, you'll see once you do that. There you go. So you see it's very yellow underneath the top, and that's actually a good thing. So someone might say, well, why is there a layer on top that's a different color? That's because it's actual food, and when actual food is exposed to air, that's what it's oxidized. Yeah. So we need to make sure if, if, for instance, this stayed yellow on top, that would be a problem. So now you can see, and you, there's a seed there, which is Yep, there's whole great. seeds in there, which is great. A quick story about this. When we are indeed this product, we gave it to people to use for their dogs, and someone was feeding their dog outside and one of those seeds went into the ground and started growing a squash plant. So <laughs> that's how fresh our products are. Um, so all of these are a really great addition. It doesn't matter if you're doing kibble all the way up to homemade raw or commercial raw. It's always good to add more antioxidants, you know, a better fiber profile, um, all of these uh, options. And so for me personally, I rotate between all three of these. You know, I just use one until it's gone for about a week, and then I just, you know, continue along the way there. So what's really interesting, in the Yin and Yang Nutrition book, I have the cancer-fighting veggie blend. And if you look at the ingredients in the cancer-fighting veggie blend, you're looking at it. <laughs> well, it, there you go. And in this case, it's so easy to do. All you yeah, have a lot easier buy, than that, yeah. because my batch makes, like... <laughs> You know, you're going to have to buy the containers to freeze it all. Um, so that's great. This stuff is... Uh, all right. So then when did Green Juju start offering freeze-dried products? Um, I, I can't give you an exact date, but it was, uh, I think, like a year before I started there. Uh -huh. um, and what and was the first one? Was that the... The, the first... No, the first juice? ones were actually the... Um, the so these two... So... Side note, people, some of the products we didn't have, so we have these amazing printouts. Yes, that are blurry because so, I blow them up. But. So uh, this is actually our most popular one, which happens to be a printout, which is great. Um, so this is bison green. So the original ones were bison green, were beef red, and uh, salmon blue, and then our bison liver trainers. And Kelly did something that was um, really amazing here. So she harnessed the power of uh, organ meat, so we know that... For instance, heart is going to have a better uh, mineral profile, a better vitamin profile, more collagen than, than normal muscle meat. Um, and then liver, which is 
nature's most nutrient-dense food. So she took the power of the healthiest form of meat and the sourcing, getting your grass-fed beef and bison, getting your wild-caught um, uh, salmon, getting your you know grass-fed bison liver trainers. So she took the sourcing part of that and she combined it with a different antioxidant color. So in nature, as you love, every color is a different antioxidant type. So we have red, we have blue, we have uh, green. And so that's kind of where it started. So if you look at, for instance, um, so the bison liver, that's just freeze-dried bison liver. Yes, which so is it's a, a, which is it's a, a really good training treat. They don't fall apart in your pocket, so. Yes, or you could break it if you wanted to yeah, snap it. Right. Um, but most dogs, even if they're raw fat, in my opinion, don't have enough organs in their diet. And so this is a great way for my 10 month old puppy right now. This is what I use, you know, this is what was the main thing that potty trained him very quickly. He loves these. And also, you know, he was dealing with some allergy issues. So it's a great liver supporter as well. Um, so each one of these is going to have a different, um, so if you look at, for instance, the salmon here, you have, um, if you want to purple cabbage, blueberries. So this is the blue recipe, purple cabbage, blueberries, fenugreek and the salmon. Yeah. And, and the other interesting thing to note here is that, so we use uh, natural vitamin E as a preservative. And we actually are, as far as I know, the only company that highlights the fact that we use non-GMO vitamin E. So that was, uh, came from Kelly's dog in the first batch was not doing well with these treats. And her vet said, I think it's usually the non-GMO or the GMO vitamin E because most vitamin E is GMO. So we go through the specific sourcing to get non-GMO vitamin E. So if you're cool. looking to avoid that, um, that's kind of where that is. And then we released duck orange okay. um, last fall. Which is duck with bone, duck liver, butternut squash, carrots, turmeric, fenugreek seed, and the vitamin E. Yep. So there you're getting those beta carotenes. And all of these, so all of these except the bison are 85% meat and 15% plants. And the, um, the bison is 96% bison and 4% um, plants. So... So this beef red has beef hearts, beef liver. So if you've got dogs with heart issues, this is awesome. Uh, carrots, beets, turmeric, and the vitamin E. Yeah, the nice thing about both the bison and the beef is that the it's only heart and liver. So those are great options for those. Yep. Um, and the bison green, if I remember, has the dark leafy greens. And is it heart and liver? Uh, yes, it's heart yeah. and liver. It has uh, dandelion greens, kale. So I and really, lo I really love that one as um, a liver therapy, liver support, liver drain. I really love this one for heart. Um, this is kind of good for a lot of different things. Um, and then this one, the antioxidants in there are kind of amazing. And that's a nice little, um, you know, throwback to we're a Seattle-based company, right in uh, Ballard, where you can see all the ships there. And so salmon, if you've ever been to Seattle, is a huge deal. And so, and also it's important to mention that fish like either salmon or sardines, they act like organ meats. They're very high in fat soluble vitamins that you're looking for. And so those are a great way to get more of that vitamin D, vitamin A, you know, the B vitamins. In the so fat. let's move down to this one, the yep. Just Greens. Is this the same stuff that is in the Just Greens frozen blend? So it's a little bit different, but it is, it is yeah but we do some things differently so the first thing to point out is that we actually do make this meaning we get all the vegetables in we make just greens and then freeze dry it so it's not just getting powders into the the facility there um to be able to do that so um the first thing is there is no bone broth in this because we want you to be able to hydrate it with whatever works for your animal okay there's more of the coconut you'll see the oil and the flour there because we're looking for a slightly different you know nutrient profile the main, the main part about this is the um, nettles. So Kelly, when she was a smaller company, used to make seasonal blends where she would, um, it gets harder to do that as you probably know as you're, as, you, as you're a national company. She used to do a nettle blend that would work so well for it, itching and allergies that people would buy a whole year's worth of this blend. And she used to actually go handpick all the nettles for, the, for those blends, which, you know, is a little harder now. Um, <laughs> but. So we, and we've already been getting great feedback on this for itching. Um, it's also just great for those, those animals who, or those people who are traveling, need right. something that's not frozen. Right. Um, 
but well, minimally and that's, This was really the first product that I think I was introduced to, and it's because it was a freeze drive. It's like, oh, I can I can get that without having to go out to the to the pet store and pick things out of a freezer. So I like and, that a lot. And the price point is basically the same once you rehydrate it. We have a larger yeah. bag as well, and so yeah. like that's an excellent because usually freeze dried is like a, a lot more expensive typically right. or can be. So in this case it ends up being all right let's talk about these little guys yes so these are um, very new so very new to all of you guys hopefully some of you let us know in the comments uh, if you've been able to try these yet so um, these are some of the first ones that are produced uh, right where I live in Lancaster Pennsylvania and um, these were just a wonderful uh, you know some of the other products we developed Kelly had definitely already started those, you know, and I came on and, and, you know, consulted, I guess, with her on some of those. But this was really the first time we came from a concept together. And it really is really the epitome of what I bring to the company in terms of fermentation and that aspect of it and her plant expertise on that side of it. And so very, very excited for these. Um, so the first one, Bam's Beets, that's fermented beets and purple cabbage. Both of these are wild fermented, which is wildly exciting that was the worst joke of all time so, <laughs> i'm a dad though so it is what it is so um so a wild ferment means that all we're doing is adding sea salt to these products um, and letting to bring the ph down and letting the natural bacteria that are contained within the beets and cabbage grow so there's going to be healthy yeast and soil-based bacteria so every pouch of this you use, you're going to get a different amount of all those probiotics and even different probiotic strains. So this is a great way. The, these also, that product also works great with our blends because you can feed this for probiotics and then this to feed those probiotics. So they, uh, they're, they're together. And, yeah. and these are concentrated, so they're a lower dose, you know. Yeah, so it. for this, because these look like really tiny little pouches, but let me just tell you the dosing on here. A tiny dog under 10 pounds is a quarter to a half teaspoon a day. Uh, small for 10 to 30 pounds is a half to one teaspoon. 30 to 50 pounds, one to two teaspoons. And a 50 plus pounds is two to three teaspoons. So that, it's going to last you a while. So this one is the beets and cabbage. And this one is turmeric and coconut oil. Yeah. So I will say, bam. And a lot of people ask this. Bam is Kelly's 12 year old, 12 and a half year old French bulldog named Bambi. Um, so this is every day, every dog, just great supplementation for, okay. you know, antioxidants, liver, all of that, um, side of it. And also those wild, uh, probiotics. So obviously the next one is near and dear to my heart as it's named after Lua, my, uh, Aww, Lua. my first dog. And so this is something, you know, that we wanted to take golden paste, which is very hard it's very messy to make at home. If you've ever made <laughs> it, it will turn, orange. yeah, everything turns orange or yellow. Um, so we do something really unique with this. So the same way that we ferment the beets and cabbage for seven days. So we ferment the whole root with the skin, everything for seven days. And then just with sea salt, then we take it out of the brine. Um, I should add, by the way, we do add some of the brine back to this one. So you, that's a extra, so vitamins, you know, some of that comes off when you do the fermentation. So with this one, we take it out of the brine and what happens is not only do you get the curcumin that people are generally looking for, but you also get the other plant compounds that are present from the whole root. And you also, what happens is in both of these products, the, instead of cooking them, because mo most of the time with golden paste, you have to cook it. So instead of cooking it, the bacteria eat the starches and sugars. So they're processing it instead of cooking it. So this is going to be a raw food product. Um, and the bacteria actually start to eat the curcumin and process it. So if your dog were to eat golden paste, they have to eat it and then their body turns it into metabolites to be used by the body. So the bacteria start this process for you. So it's digested in less time um, and there are studies showing that it's a better antioxidant activity um, and a better um, anti-inflammatory activity because of that pre-digestion. So this is the most efficient way um, to get golden paste or turmeric into your pet's diet. And this is, as you probably already know, this is sort of a must have for any animal dealing with inflammation. Um, you know, and most, most disease conditions deal with inflammation or start with yeah. inflammation. So, you know, your, your kidney animals, your pancreatitis animals, your 
just seeing your animals for support. Anything young. with the nitis, arthritis. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Any, even young, you know, one of the things we want to highlight as well is young, uh, really, really um, uh, active dogs, athlete dogs. This would be a great way to do that. And remember, it's just food. So if you want to do more than the suggested, you can because it's just a whole food product. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the things that I think we don't highlight often enough. Uh, when you're using whole foods to get your your nutritional profile, it's really hard to get an overdose. Yeah. When you're using a synthetic supplement, it can be really easy to overdose them. Um, so, you know, people are like, well, you know, I what are the doses and I want to give him more. He really likes it. You can because it's just food. Yeah, exactly. And that also is even the case when it comes to like fat soluble vitamins, you know, when it comes to things that when you add the synthetic version like vitamin D or something. Yeah. You run into trouble versus Absolutely. that. So if you want to do this. So these, yeah. So then we've got new products. Oops. These are fairly new, right? Uh, no, that one is has been here for a while, and this one was new last so I, fall. Again, we didn't have any of this product, so how dare you? The, yeah. I can't. <laughs> Clearly, you're prepared for this interview. <laughs> <laughs> Someone was supposed to bring this anyway. Yeah. Uh, bone Someone. broth. So there is a bison bone broth and a duck bone broth. So we know there's a lot of bone broths on the market, but a lot of times you're you're limited to chicken or beef, sometimes turkey. Um, yeah. So it's nice to have something that's uh, a little less allergenic for some of these kids. Well, and here's the thing about what we do, and it is, I don't have any interest in looking at a market in the pet food industry, and I know Kelly feels the same way, and saying, oh, there's six brands who have this product. We want a piece of that money. How do we, let's make our version of it. So these are completely different. In fact, when Kelly started to put um, uh, the bison bone broth in the Just Greens, I believe that was the first mass pet product that actually used bone broth hmm. back in, what, 2014? Okay. So she released the bison bone broth shortly after that. Both of these are great, novel um, proteins. Right. So I don't think anyone even offers either of these two things. And so they're... I don't think I've seen them. They're unique to us and you have, um, and each of these contains a little bit of turmeric and ginger for the anti-inflammatory part of it. Um, and so bone broth is a really interesting product because, you know, I, one of the things I like to say is hydration is great. And when people talk about what we'll talk about in a second, milk or bone broth, they go, they go, they usually go to hydration, which is, we need that for the organs, for, you know, digestibility of nutrients, but there are way more interesting things about bone broth than hydration. So. The number one being when you cook bone broth, all of the amino acids turn into free amino acids, which means that they're directly usable by the body and the kidney doesn't have to filter out any of the waste that would normally have to happen from that process. So not only is that going to be, it's not always about the amount of protein. I feed four ounces of one of these a day to my dog. That's four grams of protein, but the digestibility of that protein is so great that it actually will reduce your dog or cat's need for protein generally, even in a smaller amount like that. Keep in mind you can do more because this is like four calories an ounce. No dog's going no dog or cat is going to get a of this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. So, um, so I think that that's very, you know, these are very necessary things. I know that I feed, you know, a lot of people reserve this for people who are, or for dogs and cats who are older and dealing with joint issues, but I feed my puppy this every day. Um, and we want to set them up for health as well. So exactly. All right. And so now the next product that's fairly new. Yes. On this, well, again, we don't have it. on this very it's clear, new. although this wasn't my fault because it just started being offered in North Carolina. It's shipped on Friday. So it'll be offered this week. So all of you, if you're in North Carolina, you can now get our, um, uh, raw goat's milk. There's some, you guys have some kooky labeling laws here. So, uh, we have to put an entire new sticker on the side, um, <laughs> that warns humans not to drink it. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's one of those things. So, um, so we released, we recently released a half gallon, a quart and a pint of raw goat's milk. So this is the best quality milk in the country. So where I, where I live, um, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, the soil there is incredible. So there are, there are also places in the Midwest that just has amazing soil as well. But we talked about feeding greens to your dog. This is another way of essentially 
feeding greens. And what I mean by that is you have the goats that are eating the forage and turning that into usable nutrients in the milk. Um, and there is, there is really nothing on the planet that's more digestible than raw milk um, in terms of doing that. So first of all, all this is certified for human consumption in the state of Pennsylvania. So it goes through all the testing necessary to get on a human grocery store shelf in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, obviously we are selling this for dogs and cats. Um, and uh, so the quality is the number one thing. So this is just pure raw milk. So, you know, we, I'll talk about what we're doing with fermentation in a second in terms of doing that, but we wanna remind people that the reason why raw milk is healthy is because it's raw milk and not, the fermentation is a nice bonus which we wanted to provide people the best way to be able to ferment that, to ferment this themselves at home. And it's very easy. Um, so quick thing about raw milk is easy to explain. Raw milk is the most nutritionally diverse food on the planet. It has thousands of nutrients. We discover new nutrients every year, which is, I think is exciting. For instance, uh, in terms of fat profile, most people focus on omega threes, which are very important for keeping inflammation down. Milk has over 400 fatty acids that all do different things metabolically. So um, it contains 200 species of probiotics. So if you're using this with BAMS beets and feeding them all with this, you're gonna get hundreds of species. So you're getting of 200 species of probiotics without even the fermentation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you just leave this in your fridge for two weeks as you use it, it will naturally ferment itself, <laughs> even if you don't do anything. When milk becomes sour, it's fermentation. It's just that growth of bacteria. Um, so you get all of those wonderful things. 25% of this is not digestible by your dog or your cat. It's digestible by the bacteria that live inside of it to set up in the gut. So that's pretty exciting as well. And it contains every known digestive enzyme. So um, very, very important, I think, uh, essential part to dogs and cats diet. Also, all you cat lovers out there, um, don't want to forget you. Number one, these treats are highly, highly palatable to Our cats. cats love them. <laughs> and also this milk is just in its pure form. And we have found that a lot of cats like that better than, uh, fermentation. Cause mine fermentation would not drink the taste. fermented goat milk. So. Yeah. So it can be a great option for, um, trying for cats that maybe, um, are a little, cause I mean, let's just be honest, who knows what a cat will eat in any given time. So there's like 1800 cats here. So <laughs> I've been, uh, amongst the cats since I've been. The cats, the the cats like raw food. They like raw um, So the other two things are, we release this in its pure, you know, the best form. But also I, I do want to add too, we are the best price point on the market because we want people to be able to use this. And so we are the lowest cost and the highest quality, which is you don't see it married together very often. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. So somebody said, is raw milk good for IBD dogs? We, in, when I'm still in practice, we had a lot of allergy and IBD dogs that we would put them on a raw goat milk diet for 30 or 60 days. And that was the only thing they ate. And it was amazing. Like a lot. So you just got to get your calories in. So it can be a lot of liquid for them to ingest, but a lot of those dogs, it's like, it's just like the most wonderful cleanse and we're giving them something that's easily digestible. And you know, you, you got to go through that first week of icky stools and stuff, but, mm -hmm. uh, they, a lot of them did really, really well. And then we were able to reintroduce whole foods that they could then process a lot better. Yeah. The 30 days is almost like a gut reset. Yeah. And then you can kind of um, go from there. And so for those of you that, you know, like me love fermentation, I wanted to give people the ability to do some of this at home, because I think we can do better in the fact that if you have a probiotic that works great for your dog, you can ferment that into the milk. In fact, if you go to our website um, and go click on the, the raw milk, raw goat's milk tab. There's a video um, where I kind of explain in depth what I'm talking about. But the fermentation process on this is the easiest thing you can imagine. It takes 10 seconds to do. Um, you take any probiotic. Um, we've worked with the Adored Beast ones. Um, I've fermented all of those into uh, the milk when we were in the testing phase of this. Um, but I also did my daughter's probiotic and my probiotic and, you know, in terms of doing that. So take any probiotic that has at least 2 billion uh, CFUs or colony forming units, put it in a, a um, thawed quart of this milk here and shake it up and then leave it on your counter for 24 hours. That's the entire process. You don't need to... I think most of us could do that. Yeah, milk fermentation. <laughs> so some of the other ones are fermentation. There's 
you know, different levels of being hard and not hard, but milk fermentation is incredibly easy. And so now let's say a, a probiotic works really well for your dog. You could ferment it into this medium and use it as well to get sort of two different avenues there. And when you ferment milk, you're digesting the lactose, um, the, the bacteria are, you're adding more probiotics and enzymes, organic acids, um, that aspect of it. Um, and you can also rotate between probiotics. So you could ferment with one for a couple weeks and then move to a different one, let's say on the adored beast line, and then ferment with that, however you wanna do that. So either way is great. Um, and then the third one we did was we made it, I'm gonna stop holding that. So <laughs> on the um, third one we did was to make it lactose free for those that are very, very sensitive. So there's a brand we uh, work with online called Milk Aid, which is just lactase drops. So anytime you go to the grocery store and see lactose free milk, they're just adding lactase to it. And um, which is the enzyme that digests the that breaks down the lactose, uh, which could also be relevant for uh, Gwen's daughter. I didn't even think of that. So um, <laughs> remind me to let's talk about that. So um, so basically you take on um, so with the experimentation we did, we took a pint of milk and you take 10 drops of that lac uh, of the milk aid, put it in there and leave it for 24 hours in your fridge. And this becomes a hundred percent lactose free milk. Um, but it's still raw whole milk. So you get all the benefits we talked about without the lactose. So for the small percentage of animals that were, that are lactose intolerant, uh, we wanted them to have an option. So basically we released it in its plant, in its pure form. So people could do three different ways to feed it. So let's talk about quickly why going to the, so like in North Carolina, if you buy raw milk, it has to be labeled for use for pets. There's a lot of states that do that. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about why going to the grocery store and buying a pasteurized product and then fermenting it is going to be a thousand percent different. <laughs> yes. I mean, milk is actually a very fragile food um, when it comes to, you know, the heat processing of it. Um, the, the whole reason pasteurization was invented was, you know, for safety, but there was a study that came out recently that showed, so they took thousands of samples from dairy that was meant for pasteurization and dairy that was meant for raw consumption. Because obviously, as you can imagine, there's a lot of differences in how they produce the milk. So in the pasteurized world, they kind of think to themselves, well, it's going to be heated anyway, so it doesn't matter. So they found in, in the raw milk before it was pasteurized, in 33% of the samples in the for pasteurization dairy, they found pathogens. Um, that would be, you know, dangerous. In 0% of the samples for the raw milk milk meant for raw consumption, they found uh, pathogens. So it's a completely safe product. So instead of um, keeping the cows or the goats out on pasture and keeping them separate and, and feeding them what they're supposed to eat, they wanted to sort of corporatize milk. And how do we keep them in a, you know, confinement feeding situation and feed them, you know, bakery store <laughs> or bakery waste and all those things and still make safe milk. Well, you have to cook it to a certain temperature. And so keep in mind that it's a chemically completely different thing. So you're going to, um, denature a lot of the vitamins inside of it. You're actually denaturing the whey protein, which then becomes a different thing. Um, because so whey is uh, milk, 20% of milk is whey protein. Um, and then 80% is that casein protein. Uh, you're, you're denaturing every enzyme, including the enzyme that helps you digest calcium. So there's a specific enzyme. In fact, I don't know if this is how they always do it, but I know uh, sometimes a milk operation, they have to test if the milk's been pasteurized when it comes in, and they test it by seeing if that enzyme that digests calcium is inactive. Hmm. So, um, all of obviously the native bacteria is dead, anything like that. So pasteurized milk is a completely different, uh, is a completely different product. It also matters what those animals ate. And sure. most of the time you buy milk from the grocery store, it's grains, which, you know, cows shouldn't be eating. Um, it's grocery store waste. It's all the things that you don't want, as you know, going to AFCO meetings. <laughs> um, and so I would say if you're not uh, feeding 
raw milk than just skip dairy altogether. There's no real reason to. Um, to yeah, which is interesting because for how many years a pediatrician has been saying, make sure your child drinks, you know, their eight ounces of pasteurized milk, and it's like, okay, they're not even getting the calcium from it, and it's got they're they're adding back in calcium and vitamin D and all these things yeah. to to try to make it have the nutritional value that it had before that all got cooked out. That's your first clue. Why does milk have? <laughs> Why is it mandated to have vitamin D? It's because you lose that yep. um, in that thing. So, um, all right. For those of you who do not have access to green juju products, whether it's, you know, shipping, um, you know, not available in your local pet stores. I mean, we have the freeze-dried products on our website, um, but we do have, and I think uh, somebody from our team downloaded the link to this, but it's superfood uh, toppers to improve your pet's diet. And when you look through the list, you're going to notice a lot of the things that are on our list are in these products. Isn't that shocking? Weird. <laughs> uh, dark leafy greens, ginger, turmeric, um, pumpkin, which basically is the same family as butternut squash. They're all squashes. Um, let's see. We, I can't read this. Uh, fresh berries. We've got those in there. Yeah, Bone broth. Thank you. Um, so mushrooms are also really good. Eggs are really good. Raw local honey, fresh caught wild fish, which we have right here. Um, so if you don't have access to these products or you want to see how your pet does with something fresh, these are things you can get at your grocery store. Um, and then I think it says in here, yes, how they need to be processed. So a lot of stuff can be fed raw, but for the veggies, we do need to break down the, the cell walls to make them more digestible for our pets. And that's why if we run them through that blender or grinder and come up with this, we end up with something that's pretty usable by their body. So what we did, our dogs already had breakfast. They are, they're all sitting over here like, so we're getting another breakfast, right? No, you're getting this for dinner. Um, but these on the platters are two different um, raw food companies and they're both turkey. These are, uh, these are the dog versions, um, but you could do the same exact thing for your cats. So, you know, now do you use, I know you said you use these in rotation, but now I have all these products open. Mm -hmm. So could they get like a bit of this, a bit of this, a bit of this, a bit of this? Can, can they get all the same things, get all yeah. the different things in one day? Yeah, absolutely. And also too, um, I, I, I think uh, Kelly would be uh, mad at me if I didn't mention the plop method. Which is plop method, okay. So going back to the whole food um, aspect of green juju, we have recommended dose on the side, but remember this is just food. Right. So it's as easy as if you want for a large dog a large plop, for a medium dog a medium pop plop, and for a small dog a small plop, and you can really just eyeball this stuff because again you're not looking at a ton of calories. Um, you're looking at like you know five calories an ounce for the just greens, and so. It's as easy, you don't have to be, you know, me who in my kitchen is like creating my dog's diet and being very specific about everything. So, um, you know, in terms of ease of use, I think for most people it's easier just to be like, oh, here's my kibble or raw that I put into a bowl and I'm just going to take a spoon and there you go. So that's one way to okay, do it. So George sure. did already eat this morning, but we're going to give him a little, a little snack. He's going to be very happy with me. I'm gonna put his little plops on here. He's a little guy. I really want to see what this one looks like. <laughs> yeah, there you go. These are new. I'll, I'll put this in front of the camera in a sec, Joey. I know I'm making you a little crazy. Oh, look at that! It's so pretty. <laughs> you notice the very, very dark antioxidant color. In the, uh, look mixer. at those colors! Oh my gosh! I have to get these out of the way. And no, you don't all have to let your dogs eat on your kitchen counter. <laughs> George only does this for demonstrations. <laughs> Come here, bust. He's over here looking at the floor where I drip some. You need to push it that way. Need to push it that way? Yeah. Look, buddy. You can see on the monitor. There you go. Oh, there we go. Might need to go. No, we need to go the other way. Oh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. George, come here. George is like, what? <laughs> hmm. George always performs under pressure. <laughs> George is like, yum! So I think uh, fresh fruits and veggies are pretty palatable. Yes, absolutely. 
Could you talk about eggs really quick and like the difference between um, some of the like 99 cent grocery store eggs and your pasture raised organic free range eggs? Well, it's amazing what happens when you feed chickens or ducks or whatever the species is, what they're actually supposed to eat. So you go to the grocery store and you see vegetarian fed. Well, chickens aren't vegetarians. <laughs> they love eating bugs. And so um, there's a lot of good data um, on the nutrient profiles of uh, um, eggs that are from pasture-raised chickens that are fed, that are out on pasture, they're eating grass and bugs. Um, all chickens are going to get some supplemental feed and that kind of thing as well. But we want those things to be a major sort of part of their diet in terms of, so you get, I, I believe, three times the amount of omega-3. So the, the omega-3s go up and the omega-6s go down. They're actually, egg yolks are an amazing source of omega-3. They have, a, oh boy. on average, with pasture-raised eggs, about 143 milligrams of omega-3. Um, most of which is DHA, which is the more sort of highly usable form. Uh, both EPA and DHA are great. Um, and also the, um, you get six times the amount of vitamin D. I believe you get 33% uh, more vitamin E. All of the vitamin content uh, tends to go up. And so when it comes to animal foods that are the most nutrient dense foods on the planet, raw milk and eggs are the number one way to go and eggs are just the easiest thing to add to a dog's uh, or a cat's diet to get it's basically a multivitamin and especially a multivitamin for your brain as well um, and so that's one thing I think that almost anyone could do and yes you're paying more for the pasture raised eggs you might pay $7.99 a dozen but that still equates to I think a reasonable cost for such a healthy food for um, your dog or cat or if you know I'm buying uh, making maple scrambled eggs or whatever it might be, um, the same thing. So definitely choose right on that. So that's why you put chickens in your backyard. Exactly. And, and you let them free range and you feed them organic feeds and then you have amazing eggs. Um, I would recommend doing the the egg test. Buy the cheapest uh, you know, farm factory farm raised eggs that you can and then buy the highest quality you know, chickens that are living out on the field and are not vegetarian fed and just break the eggs in a bowl and look at the difference in the color of the yolk. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. And the thickness of the whites and the yolks, like they stand up yeah. instead mm -hmm. of being this runny liquefied disaster. It's sort of what food was before we ruined it. Cause that's what a lot happens to a lot of, a lot of foods in that. And, and by we, I don't mean me and you, I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, us as a society, we, we, we said, oh, eggs are really, really healthy. Well, how do I make a healthy egg that's raised from a chicken that only moves, you know, in a space this big and has fed the wrong things? Well, you don't, yeah, is right. the short answer to that. Yeah. So, so yeah, the uh, first morning that uh, Billy was here, I came out and he wanted to make eggs for maple. And I said, well, there's eggs in the fridge, but they haven't been washed yet because you don't want to wash your eggs until you're ready to use them because you destroy the coating that's on them. And uh, Billy's like, oh, I already had three raw eggs this morning. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, never mind. And I was like, spoiler, I didn't wash them before I made them for people either. So I never sure. wash them. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I guess if the shell, if like the, the laying box that we have, the way they roll out, they actually don't have a chance to get really dirty unless the chicken just has a messy butt, which it's not very often. Um, so they actually come out pretty dang clean. Oh, there you go. But I am one of those people that, you know, it, Last week when we did the thing with uh, Zach and Jen from Viva Raw, we were talking about how to handle raw food, and, you know, not have contamination. But I said, I'm the worst person in the world to be doing this demonstration because I'm just inoculating all of us all the time with, you know, not washing my chicken eggs and whatever. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> I, I clean up donkey poop every day. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, though, because when you look at studies with children who grow up on uh, multi- uh, sort of, um, not multi-culture farms, but uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Multi-species? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you have plants and you have animals and you have all that inoculation. You see less allergies, less asthma. Um, and it comes from that combination of being around animals. And it, the cool thing is all of you um, who, you know, are in this house on a daily basis are going to share in that bacteria because we all share bacteria with the people and animals that we live with. In fact, people who uh, 
live with dogs have a more diverse microbiome than people who don't, and that would probably be true of uh, cats as well. And so, um, you know, this is a way to not only make your animal healthier with all of these products or whatever you're doing, but also make yourself healthier potentially as well, because we're all sharing that bacteria. So, yep. So Sarah ought to have the best diverse microbiome of any kid on the planet because she insists on being barefoot in the barn, playing with goat poop, and running through the chicken coop. <laughs> I mean, she, yeah. we, had a, yeah. we had a photographer come take pictures, and you know Sarah's kind of dressed up, and she goes out to the chicken coop and takes her shoes off, and she's literally sitting in the chicken coop with chickens coming up to her, playing in their food, handing it to them. I'm like, okay. She's definitely not going to have allergies, which is... Um, <laughs> which would be amazing. See, I must have... I grew up with dogs, but I must have had uh, too clean an environment because I was allergic to everything. But I'm allergic to nothing now, which is... That makes sense as well. Yeah. Maple lives in the city, but we get her out to farms as pretty frequently, so that's... that's <laughs> and we're working on that, you know, as you know, but we'll be... Uh, so there's chickens in our future at some point, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, so. chickens are cool. One last question before okay. we finish up. Um, there are just some questions about like, can we use these products if they have kidney disease or heart disease? Absolutely. Those general ailments like that we want see. to, you want to. These are gonna be so helpful. So for somebody like Stuart, he's got heart disease and kidney disease. So I, I need lots of good fiber in his large bowel. And that's actually one of the changes that I made with the kidney disease. I added a lot more fiber to his diet because then the bacteria that are in the large bowel are using up a lot of the nitrogen waste products uh, that cause the BUN to go up. So just by adding healthy fiber, his BUN went from 193 to 90 in a couple of weeks just because we changed what his microbiome was processing. Um, so things like this are going to be great for him. Like I love, like I said, the bison, is this the bison red? Beef red. Yeah. Yep. Um, I love that for him. But the salmon, that's such great antioxidant, omega-3s. The uh, bison green is great for draining his liver. These are going to be so great for kidney health, these, these um, mixed blends. So, um, and so I've been using the freeze-dried, but I'm going to start using those guys. Exactly. And my challenge. I'm grooming you because they're going to. Yes. I, I, I would, yeah, exactly. I'd like to issue a challenge to everyone who is using any of our products. And that is um, we have this product called Just Greens, which is really the core of our company and I think really a great base for all the other products. So I would challenge you if you're using our treats, if you're using um, the new fermented blends or our goat's milk, to incorporate. Uh, just greens into your pet's diet right. as and so that's easy because base. you can do it from a freeze-dried or a frozen standpoint exactly right so that's a good base and then you can kind of build on all those things and remember if you're any diet so I make you know I make my dog's food basically every morning which actually Emily was making fun of me because she said it takes me longer to feed my one dog than you guys to feed all of your animals well so. because we found shortcuts because it, we have a lot. <laughs> you guys are like a well-oiled machine in the morning. I was like, you guys do this well. But um, I make my dogs food. And these are, well, they're not going to be the high caloric part of the diet. They're absolutely essential. And so for me to be able to do that part of it. And, you know, I remember when, before we had maple, I had definitely all the time in the world to make the food. And I remember after we had maple, especially in the beginning, I was like, Oh, I don't have time to do anything. And these <laughs> products became really, um, really great for me to use. And so that, that allowed me to see a different perspective. So definitely, um, and if you guys have any questions, you can always reach out to us at uh, info at Green Juju. And um, the great news is the company is literally just me and Kelly. So you'll get one of us and every time you ask a question. There you go.